What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel, welcome to the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet video. Today we're talking about the, it's weird, I'm doing two news videos in a row. Uh, apologies that we haven't done a VGC video in a couple of days, I've been very busy, but um, double upload today, we're going to talk about the World Championships later on. Anyways, what we're talking about right now is the news that was, uh, I can't speak, uh, what we're going to be talking about today is the news that came out uh, during the Championship Sunday stream of the World Championships. And Usually Championship Sunday, um, they give some news on the upcoming content, whether it be a brand new game or DLC, but it's almost always explicitly for the uh, competitive aspect of the game. So things that were revealed before were like Covert Cloak for Gen 9. Um, I forget. I, they revealed Cabrawler one year. I have a whole video about why that was like a stupid reveal. <laughs> Check that out after this, but uh, yeah, so we're going to talk about the news that we got today. It's pretty competitively related, but yeah, uh, if you guys enjoyed this at point in time, do me a favor, leave a like in the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications because I bring you daily competitive Pokemon content. That's a lie. It hasn't been daily. I'm working on it, but yeah, let's get into it. So uh, there's a few things I want to cover. I think we're going to start off with the brand new moves, but actually, wait, no, we should talk about this really quick. Um, so they basically just said, hey, guys. Um, we know how much you like your starter Pokemon, so all the starter Pokemon are back, and you know what that means? You already know what that- where is he? Where is he? Hold on, I'm trying to find him specifically. Well, Smeargle 2. Alright, let's just cut to the chase. Incineroar. Now, I am an Incineroar lover. Some people are Incineroar haters, I'm a lover of Incineroar. In my opinion, and I think a lot of casual fans looking into competitive won't understand this, but a lot of competitive players will, um, in my opinion, a format with Incineroar inherently becomes more healthy because it's not a tool meant to deal damage so much as it is meant to be a tool that um, helps out with hyper offense teams not dominating the metagame. That intimidate, the fake out, the parting shot, the occasional will-o'-wisp, taunts, etc. Um, the tools that Incineroar has and the typing and niche that it has uh, fill a role in the metagame that can be sort of like a glue Pokemon that slows everything down a little bit and prevents your Flutter Mains from getting out of control, prevents your Xerneases from getting out of control. Roar Incineroar was legitimately a set that people would run to keep Xerneas from being broken. Uh, it can switch in on, you know, uh, Primal Groudons in restricted formats uh, because it allowed it, it, you know, the Intimidate allowed it to live the hit, it got the berry off, and, you know, you can fake out. It's a fun Pokemon, in my opinion. Some people don't like how common it is. I think that's just the name of the game. Anyways, yeah, Incineroar is back. Every starter is back, um, which is kind of cool. Um, I'm mostly excited for Venusaur. I'm a big Venusaur lover. Uh, it's my favorite starter, uh, but also, you know, we have a couple of other important starters that are returning. You could argue that Superior is a pretty interesting one this gen, um, as well as, I don't know. Uh, I'm trying to think of another, like, influential starter. Uh, Blastoise, that could be interesting. Anyways, all the starters are back, including the um, the Gen 5 starters, you know, your Embors, etc. Uh, the ones that you just haven't seen on the Switch yet. So I'm excited for those guys. Uh, and yeah, also, I do think that Empoleon will actually be a really decent Pokemon in um, Terrastal meta, but also because it's probably going to get better Steel Stab in this generation. I feel like they're going to give it a move that it you know, that it needs to be good. Iron Head, like, it needs Iron Head to be good. I don't like that it had to run Steel Wing and BDSP. But yeah, uh, Defiant Pokemon, access to, like, liquidation and stuff. It's probably actually not going to be that bad. I like them. Anyways, so yeah, um, the starters are all returning. That's, like, one of the biggest things that um, we got news about today. Um, another thing I want to talk about, we're going to get into the Terra stuff in a second, but the brand new moves are something that we should cover, and these are all really, really interesting, and I have some thoughts about them. So, new move, upper hand. If uh, With this fighting physical move, the user reacts to the target's movements and strikes with the heel of its palm. If The best way to describe this is it's almost like a Three Stooges sort of thing, where Curly's like, you know, trying to smack Mo in the head, and then Mo goes, ah, and he like smacks him in the forehead with the palm of his hand. It's like that. It's a Three Stooges bit. Um, if the target was trying to use a priority move, uh, upper hand will get the jump on them, allowing them to attack first and cause their opponent to flinch without fail. This move will fail if the target wasn't readying a priority move. So, um, extreme speed, if I recall, is plus two priority. Uh, so I would imagine that upper hand is going to be plus three, which is really interesting. Uh, the question is, does upper hand have higher priority 
than stuff like Helping Hand, which also technically is a priority move. Can it prevent Helping Hands from coming out? Um, or is it only going to be priority attacks? These are really important things to um, think about because if Upper Hand is a move that um, stops all priority moves from coming out, including status moves and not just attacking moves, that means that it's going to have a better niche in the metagame than um, you would otherwise think. Also, it's more likely than not this isn't just like a Hariyama exclusive move, but they went with Hariyama because it's probably just a really good tool for it being a fighting type. Um, but I think that it is probably going to be a TM or a tutor. I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, err on the side of it being a tutor move. Uh, usually we get like tutor moves in DLC nowadays. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty interesting. Being able to stop bullet punches, extreme speeds. Uh, and also, I don't know if there's like a, I think Hitmontop's returning. If Hitmontop gets upper hand, that would actually be really good because I would imagine, you know, having a guaranteed fake out every time someone uses a priority move is actually really solid on Hitmontop because it's probably not the strongest move ever. And hit on top also gets technicians. So like, let's say that it's like the same power as fake out. Let's say it's 40. Now hit on top has a base 50 power physical fighting move. Um, or not a base 60 power physical fighting move that it can like hit Pokemon with. That's actually like really good. So that's, that's interesting. I think that uh, move is actually going to be like really solid in the metagame uh, on certain Pokemon, not on all of them, but yeah, psychic noise. I don't see this one being too influential, but it could be interesting depending on how powerful of a move it is. Um, this psychic type special move deals damage as it bathes the target in abrasive sound waves. This attack also prevents the target from recovering HP through moves, abilities, items, uh, or items for a certain number of turns. So it's heal block, but as an attack. Now, heal block is a move removed from the game because it wasn't used all that often. Uh, but as we all know, Don Dozo and uh, other Pokemon with access to recovery moves or just want to run leftovers and sit in the field for a while, they really like the recovery. Uh, having an attack that not only deals damage but prevents all recovery on that Pokemon is actually really interesting. Uh, and I could see it being used on a few Pokemon. Maybe it could be a decent attack for like Cresselia specifically. Um, since Cresselia already doesn't really, it wants to run like a fairy move as, a, as its main stab with, um, you know, terrestrialization technically, because, you know, Terra Fairy is a really good defensive typing for it. Um, but if you do want to run a Psychic move, I think Psychic Noise actually isn't that bad of an option for it, uh, since Cresselia is going to be able to prevent recovery on other Pokemon and outstall them with like Lunar Blessings. So this is a really cool one too. Uh, but yeah, there's other moves that they showed uh, that aren't on the website yet. Um, but here, let's go to the signature moves of the Paradox forms of Raikou, Raging Bolt, uh, and also the Paradox form of, what was it called? I can't remember. Iron Crown. Yeah, th those guys also get um, priority, uh, really cool moves. So Raikou, Paradox Raikou's move. Let me go to the video so we can see that animation really quick, and I'm going to explain what I think about the move when that happens. Um, hopefully, I don't get claimed for this. Oh my god, why did it do that? Hold on. Hold on. All right, so let me slow it down. That's that's how I'm going to prevent myself from getting claimed on this. I'm going to slow it down to like half speed. Uh, so Raikou's move is called Thunderclap, and it works like this, right? So um, Raikou, you can see that there's a uh, iron bundle across the field. Uh, the Paradox Raikou being an electric and dragon type was also just revealed. So it seems that uh, the Paradox forms are for the past um, legendary beasts are all going to be dragon plus their original typings. And it seems like the future forms are going to be psychic uh, plus the original typings of the uh, Swords of Justice. So if we look at it, what happens is Raikou strikes before the target's attack. And yeah, basically into Iron Bundle, this is really solid because Iron Bundle is a low special attack stat or low special defense stat. Also Urshifu has a low special defense stat. But it seems like it is effectively special electric type sucker punch because it one shots the iron bundle. So that's really interesting. I think special electric type uh, sucker punch is just really good. Like I said, for Urshifu, um, this is just like a hard Urshifu counter now, um, but also just into iron bundle. That's really nice. We don't really have electric priority moves in the in the game at all. So unless I'm like missing one. Uh, but yeah, that's interesting. Uh, the next move is pretty cool. It's called Tachyon Cutter, Iron Crown, Steel Psychic type. And you can see Tachyon Cutter is just guaranteed to hit twice in a row. So if I had to guess what this move does, or what this move's power is, is it's probably going to be a physical move. Um, I would guess that this move has like 50 base power if it's hitting twice in a row. And the reason is because here you can see that the Mimikyu does get uh, KO'd after taking that uh, chip damage. And I did go into the damage calculator just to see like, let's say that Iron Crown has 130 attack, something like that, because I would imagine that it's going to have a similar stat distribution 
um, at least like the numbers wise to um, iron leaves because that's just like a trend we see. So the 130 is going to be somewhere. Maybe it only has like 108 attack or something, but yeah. So uh, keeping that in mind, the calc says that if the Mimikyu was just like 4 HP or whatever, 0 HP technically, and um, it was a 130 base attack uh, steel type Pokemon using a 50 base power iron head, I changed the number to run the calc, then that would do 73 to 87%. Which means that, you know, if it hits twice, one breaks the disguise, gets the uh, HP down a little bit, and then the next one is almost guaranteed a KO. I would imagine that would make the most sense. 100 base power move in total um, hits twice. It's sort of like double iron bash. So I think that that's actually really good. Um, 100 base power steel move is actually really hard to come across. I think that the only Pokemon that like have access to this are going to be like meteor mash users, which... The bad thing about Meteor Mash is that it's, oh wait, it's not 100, it's only 90, um, and it's like not 100% accurate, so this is actually a really powerful steel move. Double Iron Bash is another one. I forget what Double Iron Bash's base power is. Let me actually check that. Let me go to National Dex. Uh, Melmetal, is it 50 or is it 60? It's 60, so I would imagine it's not going to be as strong as Double Iron Bash, um, but yeah, that's a really interesting uh, move for this guy. It could actually give him a decent niche in being like a counter to uh flutter main with like sash or any like sash fairy type or of course mimic you so yeah um getting we'll talk about the paradox stats too real quick like i said i think that the paradox pokemon um are gonna have similar stat distributions um to each other within their groups so if you don't know all the past forms of paradox pokemon have an odd number as their stats and all the future forms have an even number um so if we take into account of that, um, and we also take into account that Suicune has 580 BST, and Virizion also has 580 BST, and Walking Wake has 590, and Iron Leaves has 590, I think we can assume that like all these guys are going to be 590 in their Paradox forms, and that the numbers will be moved around in a similar way like they are in their normal trio. Because as you can see, all of the numbers, while they are in different places for the Legendary Beasts, they're all the same numbers. There's a 75, a 150, or two 115s and a 100, 75, two 115s and a 100, an 85, a 90, and yeah, it, they're just moved around basically. Same with uh, the Swords of Justice, you know, a 91, a 129, a 108, a 91, a 129, a 108, a 91, a 129, a 108, right? I'm going to assume that the same thing's going to go on with um, the Paradox forms, just in a different way. So if Walking Wake is going to be like, you know, 125 base special attack, um, I actually don't see the Paradox Raikou having 125 base special attack. I would actually argue that because it's like a Brontosaurus, it probably has 125 base uh, HP and like 109 special attack and then probably the same defense as an attack stat. That's my guess. Um, the speed is probably going to be one of the 83s. Uh, as for the Entei, I'm not going to make a prediction. I have no clue. Um, for Iron Crown, I have no clue either. Uh, but I would imagine its highest stat is probably going to be defense. It's probably going to have that 130 in there, similar to how Cobalion has the uh, 129 defense. Um, but I would imagine it also probably has, like, not the best attack stat. Maybe 108 attack and then, like, 91 speed, something like that. But yeah, um, I think that's how their stats are going to end up going. Uh, it's a pretty interesting group of Pokemon, and I'm really excited to see how they're going to work out. Uh, next up, the thing I want to talk about is this thing. This was pretty big news. The 19th Terra type. So... I assumed that this would be exclusive, the Rainbow Terra. I thought it was going to be exclusive to um, Terrapagos, I think that's its name, the uh, the third box legendary that we're getting in the DLC. This is not true. Every Pokemon can Rainbow Terra, whatever it's called, but the 19th Terra type, let's read this. The Terrasto Pokemon first appeared in Scarlet and Violet, uh, and it grants Pokemon with Terrasto Pokemon, Terrasto Phenomenon first appeared in Scarlet and Violet, and it grants Pokemon a special power while also making them sparkle like brilliant jewels. It plays an important role in battles, terrestrializing your Pokemon, opens up a world of strategy since it allows you to change your Pokemon's type to its Terra type, and increase the power of moves with the same type and change your Pokemon's weaknesses. And now in the hidden treasure of Area Zero, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, a new Terra type has been discovered, a 19th Terra type. Something about it seems different from the 18 Terra types we've seen before. Much is yet unknown, but what is the truth behind this Terra type? So, I have a theory, game theory, do -do 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 -do, whatever. Um, we can see, when, when you select a move that is boosted by your Terra type in the game, it does have this like sheen around it. Um, what you'll notice is that when your Rainbow Terra, that's what I'm gonna call it, 
um, all of the moves have that sheen. And you notice that Terra Blast is effective versus Dragonite. So we can confirm one thing. It does not make a, a move super effective against everything. If I had to guess what Rainbow Terra is, I would say it is a high risk, high reward Terra. While before, Terras could be used either offensively, you can turn your Armor Rouge into a pure fire type and then boost your fire type moves to two times stab rather than the 1.5 times stab. Um, or you can make a defensive Terra where your Armor Rouge is now a grass type and the grass type moves just gain stab and you keep all your previous stabs, um, but you now like, you know, have the resistances and weaknesses of a grass type, which is very good as a fire type. Um, while that was the option before, I think that this is going to be a purely offensive Terra that grants you stab on all moves. All moves are going to have stab, right? So you get the 50% boost on whatever. You also get the, you know, if it's the same type as you that, that you were before, maybe Glaive Rush now has two times because it's, you know, a dragon type and Ice Go Crash is two times because it's dragon type. But Terra Blast is probably going to be like an Omni type Terra Blast that is just neutral into everything. Consider it Terra Normal, right? Consider it like Terra Normal Terra Blast, basically. Um, but now it also has that 50% boost. So I think all of these gain some kind of boost, right? But I think that the downside to not make this objectively broken is probably you are weak to every type in the game. That is my prediction. I think that normal type moves hit you super effective, steel type moves hit you super effective, everything. That is my prediction. That's the only way I can see this mechanic being balanced in any way, shape, or form. Just high risk, high reward. So yeah. That's my thoughts on that. Um, what else is there to cover? Bes like, I'm, I'm going to talk about like the World Championships in a separate video today, but I think that was all the really important news for today. Um, let me go through this trailer again really, really quick, just to make sure I didn't miss anything. Da, 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 da. Um, so, Mimikyu, Smeargle. Oh, Smeargle. Oh, there, also, there's a lot of Pokemon coming back, but Smeargle's coming back. That's been confirmed. Um, run for your lives. Uh, but yeah. Let me just guys think in the comment section down below about all this news. I think it's really exciting. I think that uh, there's a lot of fun stuff coming in the DLC. And yeah, we'll talk about the World Championships later on today, but I'll see you then. Have a nice one. Bye.